Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas, and this is another video in my series on Azure Integration Services and Hybrid Options. This module, we're covering the Azure Service Bus. In this video, we're specifically going to talk about reading and writing to a Service Bus queue in Logic Apps. Let's get started by taking a look at the two different types of Service Bus connectors we have available to us. The first type is a built-in or in-app connector. This connector is only available inside of Logic App Standard. Since this is an in-app connector and runs in process with your Logic App, you're going to get the best performance and achieve lower latency using this connector. Plus, there's no additional transaction costs for using this connector in your Logic Apps. The second type of connector is a Microsoft Managed Connector. This connector is the only option if you're using Logic App consumption. This connector can be called from any place. So if you're calling this in Logic App Standard and you're hosting that in your own data center, for example, you can still leverage this connector because it's gonna make a call to the Azure data center to complete the call. Due to this, in general, this is gonna be less performant than the in-app connector. Also, this uses a polling approach, so you're gonna introduce additional latency based on your polling interval. There's also a per transaction cost, as we see with all Microsoft managed connectors. While it is only a few fractions of a penny, that can sure add up over time. If you're looking for more detailed information about these two types of connectors, you can follow this link below. Let's dive into a little bit more detail about these connectors. First off, the built-in in-app connector. As I mentioned, it's only available in Logic App Standard. When you search for this connector inside your Logic App, you could see both types of connectors depending on your search logic. You want to select the one that is tagged in app as shown below in order to select your in-app connector. Now when using the Microsoft Managed Connector, it's going to look a little bit different. You will see out that there's no in-app tag to identify this as an in-app connector. This means that this is the Microsoft Managed Connector. As I mentioned, this is your only option if you're using Logic App consumption. Once you select this connector, and if you're using it as a trigger, you have to define a polling interval. This could be anywhere from minutes to seconds, or even days or weeks, depending on your use case. Another feature of the Microsoft Managed Connector is that it uses what's called long polling. This means even though you define your polling interval as let's say every three minutes, for example, it will make a connection and actually wait for messages to arrive for the next 30 seconds. If no messages arrive in 30 seconds, it will end its connection and wait for the next polling interval. If a message does arrive, it resets the clock at 30 seconds and will continue to monitor for new messages. So even if you set your polling interval at one hour, for example, and you, if you continue to receive messages over time, this connector could continue to process messages much more frequently than your one hour interval. And we'll see this in action in our demo. With that, we took a quick overview of these two types of connectors. Let's dive into a demo and see these in action. I'm now logged in to the Azure portal, and I've went ahead and created a Logic App standard that we're gonna use for this demo. I've pre-created three separate workflows, one for testing our in-app connector, one for our managed connector, and one for writing our outbound messages. Now remember, the Logic App standard is a top-level container and can host multiple workflows. So in doing this, we need to think about how we're gonna authenticate between our Logic App and our Azure Service Bus namespace. This can be done primarily in two separate ways. The first one is gonna be managed identity. The second one is gonna be a shared access policy. Those are the two main types of ways that we authenticate. Uh, I've now jumped over to my Service Bus namespace. And like before, I've pre-created a couple of queues for us. They are our in-app, our managed, and our outbound queues to, to correspond to our workflows. Inside of these queues, you can set permission at the queue level. So you can set access controls and shared access policies on an individual queue. But when we're dealing with both types of Logic App connectors, we want to set it at the namespace level, the top level namespace level. So I'm going to go to access control. And you know I'm at a namespace level because it does say service bus namespace at the top and no individual queue information. I'm going to go add role assignment. And I'm going to set this user to an owner of the namespace and going to select a managed identity. 
go ahead and select my Logic App Standard. And my Logic App Q08 is the standard edition Logic App that I want to select. Say select and review and assign and click it again. And that's going to assign permission for all the workflows in that Logic App to have full access to the service bus namespace. Now, when we create the connection, we do need this host name, the fully qualified name to this namespace. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and just copy it to Notepad so we have it for later reference. And while I'm here, I'm going to take a look at the shared access policy. And I have one already created, LA Demo. You could just add a new one. The shared access policies are very useful when using the managed connector and also when using like BizTalk Server, for example, to access the service bus that would use these shared access policies. And here I've already created a new one that has full managed permissions. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy this primary connection string because we're going to need this when we set up our connection as well. Okay, now let's jump into our logic apps. And the first logic app we're going to take a look at is this managed connector. We're going to take a look at this long polling and see how that really impacts things. So I'm going to go to my designer and add a trigger. And I'm going to search for service bus. And you can see here we have our in-app connector. And then after that, we have our uh, managed connector has no designation of being an in-app connector. So we know that is our managed connector. This is the one we want to use. I'm just going to say when a new message is received. And here we're going to go ahead and create a new connection. I already have one down here that has been created when I ran this example before. I'm going to hit change connection, add new, just so we can go ahead and create a new service bus connection. I'm going to call it temp. temp man for managed and access key is how we're going to access this because it's the managed connector and here i'm going to paste that connection string that i had copied to my notepad earlier i'm going to hit create new and in just a moment it's going to create that new connection and you can see here that it is using that connection that we see here i can select my queue from my drop down you will get an enumeration of all the queues that are available and i'm going to use my managed queue and once I select that queue, we also need to configure the polling interval. Since this is the managed connector, I can do that down here under how often do you want to check for items. In this case, this defaults to one minute. I'm just going to set it to one day for the purpose of this demo. And then I'm going to go ahead and click save on our workflow. Now that's saved, I'm going to jump over to overview. And you can see that there's no executions of this workflow yet. So let's go ahead and send a message to the queue and then come in and trigger this workflow. I'm going to jump back to my queues and go to my managed queue. And in order to send messages to this queue, there's a nifty little tool called Service Bus Explorer. This first came out as a desktop tool when Service Bus first came out many years ago. It's now been incorporated for the most part into the browser, so it gives you a very good experience here. I'm going to send a message. And the body of this message, I'm going to actually set to the exact time it is now, which is going to be 40 seconds now. And going to do a refresh. And we sure enough, we see one message in this queue. I'm going to go to peak mode and peak from start. And here's my message. You can see the text is at 12, 15 and 40 seconds and nothing is happening to this message. Come over here, we'll do a refresh on our workflow. Sure enough, nothing's happened, no executions, just as, I, as we would expect. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit run and take a look at what happens now. And we can see that it did execute at 16 minutes, 12 seconds. Gonna jump back over here, do a refresh. Message is gone from the queue. Let's go ahead and send another one. It's now 12, 16, and 34 seconds right now. And let's jump back over here again. At this time, I'm not going to run, I mainly trigger this process. We'll do a refresh. And sure enough, you do see that that did run again. So it is maintaining that connection for that 30 seconds for the long polling interval. So even though I had set the connection 
uh, polling on here to be one day. Once it does make that connection, it is going to keep it open. So now let's go ahead and wait 30 seconds past this last time, which is now. And let's go ahead and send another message and see what happens. And we'll do a refresh here just to make sure. Sure enough, no Q messages are there. And let's send it at 12, 15, and 25 seconds right now. Now, I do have a timer open on another window, so you, you can't see that in the background. And let's jump over here. We'll do a refresh. And that refresh has completed. And sure enough, it did not pick up that message. So it's going to be waiting for that next polling interval to execute. So we could come up here and run and run it again and pick up that message instantaneously. And again, it would restart our 30 second long polling. So that gives you an example of what it's like to use the managed connector. That experience is the same we saw here in Logic App Standard. Experience is going to be the same if you're using Logic App Consumption. So let's jump back to our workflows and our Logic App. And let's go to our in-app process here. We're going to jump to Designer. And in this case, we're going to add a new trigger. We're going to search for Service Bus. If I did want to select only in-app connectors, I could come down here and select a runtime, select in-app, for example, and it's only going to show me the in-app connectors. And I'm going to select the same one we saw before. Here, I'm going to give it a connection name, temp in-app. And I do have to specify my authentication type. In this case, I'm going to use managed identity. And I do have to enter that fully qualified namespace to my service bus. I did paste it here in Notepad. And I'm going to go ahead and create new. And that's going to go ahead and create our connection using integrated auth. So any workflow inside this Logic App is going to have access to that. Just like we saw before, I have access to all the queues. I'm going to say in app. And the big difference here is there's no how often should I check for messages. There's no polling interval that we define here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's see how the behavior differs when I send a message to this queue. So that is saved. I'm going to come down here to my queues. I'm going to select in app. And in this case, go back to my service bus explorer. I'm going to send a message like before. It is 12, 19, and 50 seconds right now. That's going to send that message. We're going to do our refresh. And once we do our refresh, we see that message has been picked up. We're going to jump back over to our Logic App, see how it is executed here. And sure enough, that did just automatically pick that up. It did take a little bit longer than I would have expected, just the first time kind of uh, loading everything up and getting that to run. So let's go ahead and try that again. And we'll come over here. We'll send another message at 12, 20, and 50 seconds. 12, 20, and 54 seconds right now. And we'll do a refresh again. At this time, we don't even see the message in the queue. Jump back over here, do our refresh. And sure enough, pretty much instantaneously, it has picked up that message. So now that Logic App and the connections has all been loaded into memory, it did take about uh, 20 seconds for that first message to get picked up. And that's definitely the longest I've ever seen it kind of take when I first started something up. Uh, I might have some other processes running, but in the future, now it's loaded in memory. This is going to run significantly faster than we would see with the polling interval based uh, approach. So let's take a look at how we would write a message to a queue. It's equally as straightforward. I'm going to go to my workflows, go to my outbound workflow, jump over to designer. And I've pre-built just a recurrence in a compose shape. Compose shape does nothing exciting, just says send from inside a logic app. And let's come down here. I'm going to say send a message to my queue. So I'm going to add an action, select service bus. And I'm going to go ahead and use the in-app connector. I have connections created to both, but 
uh, in-app connector is going to give me the best performance, lowest latency, and no additional transaction costs. It's going to default to my in-app connection that I've already created. I'm going to go ahead and select outbound queue. And I want to set the content that I'm going to write to here. There's all these different uh, other properties that we have. So we can set like message ID and session ID, stuff like that. We'll go into some of these in more detail in later videos. For now, we're just going to set the content. And I'm going to set this to the output of that compose shape. I'm going to hit save. And I want to go ahead and execute this recurrence. I'm going to go to overview and go ahead and hit run. And it's going to take it just a moment. Things seem to be running a little bit slower today. And sure enough, there it has executed. We'll jump over to our queues. And just there's our outbound. We're going to go to Service Bus Explorer. And just like we saw before, we have messages in our queue. I'm going to peek at those. And this is here. Sure enough, you see right now we have received this message. And it does say sent from inside a Logic App. So this was a very simple example of seeing the two different ways to read messages from service bus queues using the two types of connectors. Uh, we did take a look at the long polling for the managed connector and saw how we could use that and see how that really impacts things. And we also saw the lower latency of the in-app connector, which is generally going to be your connector of choice. And we took a look at how to write to that service bus queue. Now let's jump back to our slides to wrap things up. If you'd like to learn more about Azure Integration Services and Logic Apps, I have some resources available on my website at stephenwthomas.com learn. This is a great landing page for all learning resources. In addition to that, I have four professional Pluralsight courses available. You can find them by doing searches for these titles below or searching for my name as an author. Thank you for listening to this video and don't forget to like and subscribe.